in each zoning decision. The presentation times may not be reduced, but may be extended by majority vote, provided they are expanded equally for proponents and opponents. Anyone wishing to speak shall come to the microphone and give their name and address to the city clerk. Do not speak unless you have the microphone and have been recognized. There's also some cards up there at the microphone. Please fill one out uh, each time you come up and hand that to the city clerk, uh, who's over here to my right. With that, we'll call the uh, public hearing to order. First item up on the agenda is uh, item 3390PZ 2022-967, and that is for 4253 Chambly dunwoody Road. Michelle? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The applicant is seeking two variances related to a six-foot tall opaque wooden fence that extends into the street side yard. The um, two variances, one concerns the height, um, it, they're requesting to exceed the four foot minimum, and the other concerns the material, that is, it is uh, restricted to being 50% transparent, but they're requesting to be allowed an opaque fence. Um, the diagram shows in red where the uh, current uh, fence is proposed to be located, and it was constructed. What you see in gold is where it would be allowed because by, um, it would be extending only into the rear yard. But where it's proposed, it's in the side yard against the street side. Um, there are some images of the constructed fence taken from the street view. Uh, staff is recommending denial of both variances, both to, uh, denial of the height request as well as the materials of requesting it to be an opaque fence. Thank you. Anything else? No. All right. If you're here to speak in favor of this item, if you'll come to the microphone and tell us your name and address. to 53 Shambly Dunwoody Road. Um, we also submitted a presentation to go along with our um, clock this evening. There it is. Um, so thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak to you tonight regarding the variants that we've applied for um, to our home that you see here. Um, Scott and I were married in 2008 and have lived at this address um, ever since for the last 14 years. Um, at that time, our family consisted of the two of us and our two rescue dogs. Um, and so when we decided to put a fence in, we looked at the needs of our family at that time and made the decision based upon those needs and we put the fence up. Our house was not a part of the city of Chambly then, um, and we did not get permits to build that fence, and the county never came and said that we had done anything wrong. We put the fence up, and that was that. Since 2008, our family has changed quite a bit. Um, we now have three beautiful daughters who are there with us um, tonight. Um, and we still have two rescue dogs, although different ones, of course, um, than the ones before. Um, but also in this time, our fence that we had um, had fallen into disrepair. And as you can see, we tried for a time to mend it, um, but then we realized that what we really needed was an entirely new fence. So my husband and I did what we did the first time we put the fence in, and we looked at each other and talked about the needs of our family at the time and what type of fence would best meet those needs. And the first things we discussed were safety and security. Because of the way our house sits on our lot, our backyard is completely visible from the street, from Gainsborough and from Shanley, Shambly Dunwoody. And we learned just how vulnerable this made us, and we were the unfortunate victims of theft in 2015. Our green egg, which you can see pictured there next to the shed in the back, um, was stolen from our backyard in the middle of the night while we were sleeping. Um, we were lucky, though, and thanks to the excellent work of the Shambly Police Department, we were able to get it back. Um, and I did submit a copy of that police report along with this presentation. But when we were searching for new fence options, um, that feeling of vulnerability that we had been left with stayed with us. And Scott and I were wanting something that would give our children more privacy and security so that they could play safely and freely in our backyard and not be visible to every person who passed by. We also had our four-legged members of the family to consider. 
We have had a large influx of deer into the area, and with our old fence, our dogs could easily see them and try to get to them. That's a picture from our deck into the side yard. Our great Pyrenees learned that she could quickly um, and easily clear the four fence four foot fence that you can see there um, in one hop and chase after the deer. And she did this several times. Her getting out and blindly sprinting after them caused unsafe conditions for our neighbors, for our neighbor's children that would try and corral her, and of course any drivers on the roads nearby. So when Scott and I chose a fence, we chose one that would meet the needs of our family and look good as well. We have received countless compliments from our neighbors and have submitted several letters of support from them with this presentation. Um, when we put up the fence, we did what we had done the last time and we just put it up. We were not changing the footprint of where our old fence had been and it never once crossed our minds that we would need to obtain any type of permit. We were maybe naive in this, but we were simply basing our decision off of our previous personal experience. With our new fence in place, the only way for our dogs to now see the deer is to climb up into the playhouse. We have had zero instances of our dogs getting out and causing unsafe situations for those around us since we've had the fence. And our children have also told us that they feel safer and can play more freely in their own backyard because the fence grants them privacy that they did not have before. So when you vote next week, Please vote in favor of the variants that will allow this fence to remain and continue to provide our family the safety and security that we need. Um, we also submitted, uh, had letters of support written from our neighbors and we didn't know if y'all just read those on their own or we needed to read them. Uh, they're, they're in the record. They're in the record? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I might suggest that you hire yourself out to uh, put together presentations for everybody that comes before us, because that, that was pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Definitely. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this item? Hello, I'm a neighbor, Michael Braun. I have a uh, clerk card, if you would like, or I could just say my address. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I believe we're talking about data, evidence, and opinion. I'll uh, give one of each really quickly. So as they said, they had several letters. I was not able to write a letter, so I thought I would come and give my uh, neighborly letter of support in person. So I, for one, am one person who is in favor of that fence staying up. So there's your data, a single datum. That's me. Um, in terms of evidence, I think that it would be important for the city council to look through section 280-32 because I know that you are going to consider that when you are making your final recommendation. I think that going through the uh, provisions that you would look through to see whether or not you could grant a variance, there are a couple of important ones. I do see that um, in reading whether or not there are extraordinary or exceptional conditions, it is noted that this is a corner lot. While that is common, it does create a lot of issues when you were trying to do um, things that meet code and meet uh, meet the requirements of your lot, so I did want to point that out. I think that um, the Section B saying that the application of this zoning ordinance would create an unnecessary hardship. I do think that the family building the fence in the prior location of their old fence actually did save them money and it would save the um, the viewership of the neighborhood, I think it would be better to build it on top of that old uh, area where the old fence was. I think that would be helpful for their yard and the general aesthetics of the um, neighborhood. So I do think you could count the hardship of having to move that fence back if you're looking at that. I do notice that the very last piece says, are there any, um, are there any issues? You can pick one and the last little sentence in section D is or, which I think means you only need to find one of these things or possibly it means that section E is the most important one. Relief it granted would not cause substantial detriment to the public good nor impair the purposes of intent of this zoning ordinance. I think that that is very clearly the case here. If relief was granted, if this variance were granted, um, certainly there would be no detriment to the public good because of the how, pleasing the fences to the people of the neighborhood and um, it would not impair the purpose or intent because the intent of keeping the um, 
front yard open, keeping the opacity of the front yard fence or the side yard fence in place uh, would not substantially change where this fence moved back. I think 10 or 15 feet, whatever it is. So I think clearly Section E is something that you could use to approve this variance. Uh, and then the last one was opinion, and it's basically the same as data. I do like defense, and hopefully I uh, think you guys can approve this variance. Very Thank good. you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this item? All of us. <laughs> Any, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? All right, I will uh, remind everybody that uh, at, this, at this point, council uh, does not uh, have a dialogue uh, with, with the applicants, but it will come back up later under the development department's uh, items. And uh, if, if council has any questions, they may or may not have, they, they will ask at that point. So you may want to stick around for a little while. Uh, the next item up on the agenda is item 3394 PZ 2022-968, which is 2344 Perimeter Park Drive Variances and Waivers. Thank you. This applicant is seeking two variances and one waiver. This concerns a property zoned mixed use business center. The project is to dem do a demolition of the existing vacant two story office building and to construct a new three story 15,840 square foot medical office. Um, and this is located off of Perimeter Park Drive, off the cul de sac there, and backing up, and the property backs up to I 285. Um, the Two variances. One concerns the requirement of a zoning district to have two different uses in a vertically mixed use development. They are proposing one use. They are proposing an office use. The other variance is to reduce the number of required parking spaces. The site currently ha has 26 spaces. Uh, for According to our code for general office buildings, it would need 63 spaces to meet the code. Um, and they are requesting to maintain the existing number of spaces of 26. And then the waiver concerns the parking lot planting requirements that the code requires within parking lots. Um, and they're requesting a waiver from that because to add that requirement would further reduce the number of parking in the, in the lot. We, this slide shows a comparison of the existing site plan, the site development currently on site, the proposed site plan, what you see is a difference in the overall footprint. Um, but you also see, let's see, I think the next one shows it better. The applicant will be restriping the existing parking lot and making sure that it complies with um, ADA. And also of note is that they are proposing to build with the concrete and steel framing materials, which is required for anything three story years or greater. And you know, often you get variances coming before you regarding that. Um, these are just the elevations. Um, just to note that the building does not face, has, does not have street facing um, frontage. So um, the blue line that you see, you know, that's facing an interior component, building interior to that area. Similar to the yellow line to the rear of the, of the building, it's facing uh, another property with a building. And then to the right, um, the red line is, that's where I-285 is, and then the, its own frontage is in front of its um, parking lot. So it's landlocked and it's accessed through an easement off of the cul-de-sac. Um, there is a proposed elevation. It's a rendering of what it would look like and their intention to meet all the civic standards and architectural requirements. Here's some photos of the existing site uh, location. Um, there is a surrounding parking and the applicant is spoken to with surrounding um, property owners that have shared parking agreements are available if they become necessary. Um, so running through, um, staff did find reasons for approval, both of the two variances um, regarding the use uh, the requirement of uses as well as the parking spaces. The use is back there because it's not public facing and it doesn't have the same consideration or viability for a true mixed use development. You're not going to have retail or storefront um, exposure to make a, a viable mixed use um, 
development there. The land use, our future land use, actually, our future land use map identifies that area as appropriate for office use, and this is what they're proposing as a single use. Um, and then, of course, it's located within a, an office um, park. The 26 spaces, they did provide information about the estimated number of patients and um, staff. Um, and it, it seemed to be an adequate amount for what they're um, proposing or indicating is typical and we looked up on for oral surgery which is different than some other medical uses and so we found grounds to recommend approval. Um, for the waiver, we also recommended approval for the waiver um, because of the number of parking um, constraints on the site and that, that, that concludes um, our, our report. Very good. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this item? Come on up. Tell us your name and your relationship to the project, please. Thank you, sir. Um, really, uh, the only thing, I mean, that was very good. Thank you. You really covered everything. So I don't really have much to talk about, but I just wanted to uh, discuss like the context that we're in. Like, like she said, uh, we don't have street frontage at all. We're really tucked back in here. Let me see if I can work this slide. So that's that's our uh, that's not our entire site. Obviously, um, that little red dot is our our site. But you can see to get back there, you got to go through this whole sort of suburban style development. And you can see that red line takes you all the way back, and it's still even hidden further. So you can see here, and then we're like behind another building there and, and off of 285 there. Um, so I said all that to say, people coming here, are, are they know where they're going. It's going to be a dentist's office, a single tenant. Um, so the people coming here are his patients. And he only has possibly, you know, 10 to 12 patients at a time there. And, and probably about 15 staff, somewhere around there. Um, it varies. But the idea, and I think the building design and uh, use is in line with the mixed use um, uh, zoning. It says, uh, the purpose and intent of this zoning district is to facilitate a high rise urban form of development with a mix of uses, open space, and a connected street and sidewalk system to support a more active, multimodal, and walkable environment at all times of the day. The district also encourages adaptive reuse and redevelopment of existing mid-rise and high-rise development that was originally designed in a suburban form. So I think the latter part of that really applies to this more than the first part. Um, obviously, like we said, we're, we don't have a street front, so the whole mixed-use thing is, is hard to do. Um, but changing this sort of suburban uh, campus and creating a little bit more uh, contemporary uh, office space, I feel like is in line with this mixed use zoning. And then you can see here real quick, the, the circled areas in red. That's really all we're changing with the parking lot because we're trying to reduce, or trying to keep from reducing the number of spaces by doing any improvements. We got a little bit of curb that's over the property line that we're going to adjust, and then we have uh, just a little reconfiguration of the ADA spaces to make um, a more accessible curb entrance, and then we're going to push the entrance to the building over to the corner instead of in the center, so that we can utilize that corner entrance a little better. And that's that's the before and after. That's it. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this item? Anyone in opposition? Seeing none, we'll move on. Next item up on the agenda is 3395 PZ 2022-969-2197 Irvindale Drive Fence Variances. 
This property is, was located within the um, PUD zoning district, the downtown PUD zoning district. The applicant is seeking relief from our requirements concerning chain link fences, um, both the uh, height of the fence, which is um, six feet, which is not allowed in the front yard, only four feet, are that's the highest offense is allowed, and also type, so chain link fences are not allowed at all in front yards. So it was an existing fence that they replaced, um, repaired partial of the, an existing fence and made it some improvements to it, but it's still a chain link fence. Um, you recognize this property, it's um, come before you recently. Um, they just uh, opened up and got their CO um, this month. Uh, they came before you in the fall or winter um, for the monument sign um, that uh, didn't quite meet our standards. Uh, the requests again concern the chain link fence, the type of fence, it's not allowed in the front yard um, and they were, are requesting it for it to be six feet. Um, and it's a four feet is the maximum. And this is surrounding um, a, a detention pond area on the site. The, um, this body, um, when you uh, approve the DCI, um, you did specifically condition the applicant to improving the looks and aesthetics of that pond and to make improvements around it. Um, it did not specifically address the chain link fence, but you were concerned at the time about the appearance of the pond. Here's some, some photos of what the fence looks like in relation to the new improvements on the site. Um, staff did not find reasons for um, supporting approval. We recommend denial of both the chain link fence in the front yard as well as a denial to exceed four feet um, limit if it is allowed in the front yard. Includes our report. Very good. Anything, John? Got a lot of fences coming up here tonight. Anyone here wishing to speak uh, in favor of this item? Hey, Seth, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. Good to see you. All right. Um, a couple things to note here. First, it's an existing fence that has been there for maybe 15 years. Um, we did have to remove a small section on the front end to um, do exactly what uh, council had asked us to do, which was to regrade the detention pond to make sure it flowed well and it looked well. We, of course, had a landscape plan to um, ensure that grows in front of it to make it look beautiful. You really couldn't see the photo um, from the old um, Google image, but we have vastly improved this site um, with the intention of being a very beautiful and um, welcoming space. Um, so I've just got some notes here. Um, there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to the particular property in question because of its size, shape, and topography. The site has substantial mature tree covering in the north side and east rear sides of the lot. The lot slopes substantially up toward the north, the north lot line, making a large portion of the lot unbuildable unless substantial grading occurred. The site was developed prior to the current UDO with a retaining pond surrounded by a, chain link, a six foot chain link fence in front of the lot on the north side of the driveway entrance and parking areas. Um, the application of the zoning ordinance would not create unnecessary hardship, and so I want to address that. The staff notes stated that. Um, the application of the zoning ordinance at this juncture would cause substantial hardship. As noted in the Planning and Development Department staff report related to this matter, um, our plan for redevelopment of the property was approved by the council in 2019 with the only caveat that the applicant make the improvements to the existing detention pond to enhance its appearance and assure it's functional properly per review and approval of the planning and development director. So at that time, the fence had been listed on every plan, the land disturbance permits, the civil plans, and it was listed as a six foot chain link fence. And we really just had to remove one section in the front so that we could get the construction vehicles in to actually dig up that retention pond to make it function properly because it, it had been neglected for so long. So then we repaired that fence. We did not replace the fence. We just fixed the front end of it. Um, let's see. We did, and we repaired the detention pond. Uh, at that time, of course, we budgeted and planned for it as part of the necessary costs and 
work for redeveloping the site for our intended use and for um, empty to conform with zoning and regulatory requirements. Had the council at that time required us to replace or remove all the fencing surrounding the retention pond, we would have done so in our initial plans. It was not included in those plans, and if the variance is not granted, it will require us to, of course, spend money not contemplated or budgeted for fence removal, landscaping repair, and replacement. This does constitute a hardship since it was not required until the very late stages of the property redevelopment. Additionally, if the variance is turned down, it will render our actual use of the portion of the property adjacent to the retention pond unusable for a period of time when business operations are expected to commence. Finally, to remove the fence would constitute a higher liability on part of the distillery of modern art, making the running costs of ensuring the building, property, and business substantially higher on a continuous basis. An unfenced retention pond would substantially increase the cost of ensuring the prop oops, sorry here, potential hazards to our guests, staff, and public who pass by the sidewalk. Um, to have an unenclosed retention pond, people can get hurt. And it really does seem dangerous. I'm not just saying that because I don't want to remove a fence, but if a kid's riding on his bicycle near the area and falls off and falls into that pond, it's not a couple feet. It's, it's probably 10 feet down. Um, and our current landscaping will block from public view um, once it has grown. But now that we're in spring, we're going to see some substantial growth. Our goal this whole time on this project was to build something beautiful. And I think we have achieved that at this stage. To be able to keep that fence keeps not only us safe, keeps that detention pond um, the way it needs to be, and it's not really uh, you know, an ugly site. We're on a side road um, off Irvingdale Drive, which people don't even know where it is. Um, the fence itself is in great shape at this point. Uh, what else do we have here? Sorry. Um, the story of modern art, okay, we did repair this here. No practical, we would have had no practical error, obviously, to approve the appearance um, of the detention pond without removing that one section, which seems to have triggered this entire variance necessity. Had we not pulled anything off of there and the plans had already been approved with that thing existing, this wouldn't have been a problem for anybody, I don't believe. Um, and any reasonable person would regard redevelopment of our property as an aesthetically attractive environment, which is a requirement, both built and natural, and improving the city's appearance. Um, we are a customer-facing business, heavily invested in creating an attractive and welcoming appearance as an enticement to the public to come and use our facilities for their intended purposes. The entire project was predicated on the notion that the building and its interiors must be attractive and beautiful. An extraordinary amount of time, money, and effort went into doing so. Anticipating that the chain link fence would remain, as we had every reason to believe, it was part of the plan approved by the city nearly three years ago. Um, and that landscaping was specifically planted to eventually obscure that view of the fence, um, which will increase the likelihood that it would not be visible from the street and be aesthetically pleasing to the public, as well as safe and not a liability. That's all I got, guys. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, sir. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this item? Anyone wishing to speak in? Okay, come on. Good evening. Uh, my name is Josh Word. I am uh, Seth's architect, or I work for the firm that did architectural services for that. I'm also a, uh, a resident of Shambly. I live at 3842 Captain Drive, and I also serve on the design review board for Shambly. So, um, Seth covered a lot, so I won't belabor the point, but uh, I do want to emphasize that in designing this facility along with Seth, obviously we put a lot of attention into making something that was unique uh, and beautiful. And I think Seth himself has spent a lot of time focusing on making something that's attractive uh, and open uh, to the public and uh, will do anything he needs to to make sure that that stays a nice looking uh, area because it is at his front door. Um, anyone coming and going from this property is gonna have to pass by that with every visit. Um, so again, don't want to belabor the point, uh, but did want to speak up. Very good. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your service on the DRB as well. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in up? Oh. Yep. All 
Hi, my name is Henry Rosenbaum. I am the uh, general manager of Distillery of Modern Art. Uh, I'm not a resident of Chambly, but I'm very anxious to be at a, uh, working in Chambly. Um, I've been with this project since August. Uh, I, I've known about the project for a lot longer than that. Um, the I, again, like Josh before me, won't belabor the point, but uh, we have spent uh, an inordinate amount of time stressing every detail and every part of this to make this a really unique and beautiful building. And I think if coming by the space, even seeing the photos that are on the screen, uh, you can immediately tell it is a massive improvement uh, over what it existed before. And if the point of the code is to improve the aesthetics of the city, I, I think we have accomplished that in spades. Um, with respect to the chain link fence, coming this issue coming so late in the game for us uh, does dramatically alter our plans. Uh, for, for the record, we are not quite open yet, uh, which is also something that we would very much like to do as soon as humanly possible. Uh, we are very close, but we are not there. And anything that delays us or, or pre prevents us from being able to greet guests and let people use our space is, is something that we would like to have moved out of the way and you know particularly with the chain link fence uh the retention pond has improved uh, dramatically in its appearance the growth in front of it will obscure it from the street view and it would be beneficial to us and we think beneficial for the city of chambly uh to allow us to have this here and allow us to open uh with the landscape architecture as it stands very good thank you very much and we do have a couple of real, uh, realtors in the audience if you'd like to become a resident of the city. <laughs> anyone wishing, anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this item? Anyone in opposition? All right, we'll move on to the next item. PZ 2022-971-5077 Peachtree Road Variances and Waivers. Thank you. This uh, applicant is coming before you um, for their project to reuse and renovate a single one-story office building and install some modified streetscape. Um, they are seeking four variances and six waivers. The zoning district is VC. Um, the existing site plan um, shows uh, how the property is built out at 99% impervious as it is. Um, the parking lot in the rear is actually located in Norfolk Southern Railroad right of way. Um, and the structures um, occupy 75% of the area of the site. They um, came before us seeking to do interior renovations and they triggered a threshold that requires them to bring the site up to conformance. Um, one of, whoa, what happened? Did I do that? Um, uh, the streetscapes that they're proposing is to have uh, the five-foot sidewalk and five-foot landscaping strip um, and to keep the storefront, the ramp in the rear, um, all other aspects would be the same. This is an illustration of their floor plan, the interior work that they're planning to do. Um, and this is a proposed rendering of what it would look like from the exterior and more details about the elevations from the front facade. Uh, these are photos of the existing site. Uh, the list of variances, so starting off that they're requesting variances regarding the impervious nature of it is already completely um, built and 99% um, impervious. Um, they're asking relief from our sustainability measures, um, relief from our tree density requirements as they don't have space location on the site for it and also request to not to provide the enclosure on the dumpster. They're asking for waivers related to the sidewalk. I would note that the sidewalk requirement for 10 feet to 5 feet is actually an opportunity to reduce the overall impervious impact. The site has constraints on either side of it as it relates to runoff already um, because of surrounding um, development. Um, they're asking to relief from the supplemental zone um, and the landscaping of that. 
They're asking for relief related to the fenestration line um, and the facade height and to be relieved um, regarding open space. The only way to achieve some of those things would be to demo um, part of the building to achieve some of these site requirements. So staff is recommending um, approval of all of the variances that they're requesting given the existing site constraints um, and also uh, approval of the waivers that they requested. That's the conclusion of our report. Very good. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this item? Come on, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, just want to make sure I'm not talking too loud. Uh, uh, I'm Matt Albajes. I'm the Senior Managing Director of Integra Realty Resources. We currently have this property under contract and uh, we're submitting it. Thank you for hosting and thank you for the uh, job explaining. Um, this is an interesting property. We, uh, our firm is a specializes in commercial real estate uh, appraisals. Um, and so when we began our due diligence on this, it started to unravel the uh, Norfolk Southern complexity, the frontage. Uh, we're very limited to just the footprint of our building. Um, when I read the waivers back, and, and Josh, our architect, will speak more in depth on some of these, is that the issues that we're facing are that we're simply unable to address them and incorporate them because we don't own the land. We can't squeeze a dump truck between the two buildings to put an enclosure. Um, it's a very challenging property to bring up to current compliance. It just doesn't lend itself very well to it. But what we are excited about is being a part of Shambly. Uh, I'm, not, I'm no longer a resident of Shambly, but I have been. Um, our current business is in Shambly. Uh, of all the places in Atlanta that we could pick, I pick Shambly. Um, I'm very, very bullish on what's going on here, uh, and we're excited to be right across from the trail, right on the, uh, what I consider to be Main Street. We want to put on a very good um, product that is going to bring pride to the neighborhood. Um, we want to be good neighbors. We want to invest in the property so that um, the people around us benefit from it as well. We have been in touch with residents, so we are uh, unfortunately late in finding out that there's been some, some historical issues with water um, and not getting off of the property. Um, it's something that we're committed to researching. Uh, unfortunately, there is a land lease on this area with Norfolk Southern, so we can't at this point say exactly what the fix is going to be, uh, but that we're committed to researching it uh, and fixing this problem because as you see from our renderings, we're putting a, uh, planning on having a roll-up door in the rear. Uh, we don't want to have water. We don't want to have rodents. We don't want to have any of these issues that are, um, have been issues with this, this property. Uh, we're committed to fixing them. And um, we're, we're happy to answer any questions. Um, but with that, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over. Okay. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this item? back again. Uh, Josh Ward, uh, like Matt said, architect working with him on this project. Uh, again, resident of Chamblee um, and also turn on design review board. Um, this is the presentation I think I prepared. Uh, don't need to spend too much time on it. I mean, staff covered a lot of it fairly clearly, but um, yeah, I think the, the biggest challenges that we're facing right now is that the building when developed was built right up to the property lines. Um, and the only open area of the property is the space in between, which serves as the access drive to the parking area. Um, so what we've tried to do is come up with a solution uh, that obviously improves the building aesthetically uh, without having to start over on the building. Um, the, the structure of the building is a pre-engineered metal structure. So in terms of retrofitting it uh, to go higher or to change the facade is uh, challenging at best. Um, not particularly cost effective at worst. Um, you know, and obviously to make this deal a, a successful deal, um, we're trying to reuse as much of that existing structure as possible. I also happen to think it's a pretty unique structure architecturally from what you typically see in downtown Shambly. So we're trying to highlight some of those aspects, but um, improve some of them where we can. Um, in terms of the sidewalk, um, I don't know if we want to start going, oh, sorry. Is the right line? Gotcha. My apologies. Uh, so obviously we know where we're, we're located. This is on Peachtree Road, directly adjacent to our Claremont overpass. 
um, passes over Peachtree Road. Um, this is a, a basic site plan that you saw earlier. Um, obviously, what we're trying to do at the front is to um, obviously continue the, the sidewalk infrastructure that the city is trying to implement. Um, one of the things that the city did a couple years ago was go ahead and put in street lamps along Peachtree Road. Um, unfortunately, where they were put on this piece of property or in front of this piece of property was right where the sidewalk wants to be. Um, so that's why you see the sidewalk jogging uh, in the locations that it does. We're trying our best to work with that infrastructure that's already in place without having to dig it up and start over. Um, so there's an existing power pole that serves the building as well as the existing street lamps that we're working around. We are proposing to put in the bench and, uh, and other trash cans that would be required for the code. Um, as staff mentioned, we're proposing only a five-foot sidewalk versus the 10-foot. Um, we'll see when we get to uh, some of the, the images of the properties either to the north of ours, so the, the townhomes and the condo development. You can see where the trail crosses over Peachtree Road. Once it gets past that, there's a smaller sidewalk there. Uh, the properties to the north either have no development with no sidewalk. The first place that a sidewalk does appear is at the uh, pet cremation services building, um, which is also uh, about a three-foot sidewalk, I believe. Uh, so we're exceeding even what's adjacent to our property, but also, as staff mentioned, it's really our only opportunity to get or preserve green space on the site. Um, you know, last point I'll make is with the roof structure, the other thing that uh, why we wanted to reduce the, the impervious surface of the supplemental zone uh, to increase that softscape was because of the way the roof structure works, it, it overhangs the front entries of the building. Um, what that means is the, the runoff from that roof is going onto the ground. We want softscape there to be able to absorb that water. We don't really have an opportunity because of the height of that roof to put a gutter and downspouts back to the, to the wall because it would create a, a head height conflict. Um, uh, so we're proposing to keep it that way, but obviously manage that. Um, the best way we can, uh, you can see in the existing right now, it's just being managed simply with a gravel pit. Um, we hope to improve that with some more substantial planting and stuff to keep erosion down and that sort of thing. Um, staff already talked about the elevations of plan, so I won't go back over that again, uh, but just wanted to highlight some of those characteristics. That's all I have. Very good. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this item? Anyone in opposition? Hello, I'm uh, Connor Carey. I'm a Chambly resident, uh, 5097 Peachtree Road. Uh, um, as the next door neighbor to that development, uh, of course, we feel that, or I feel that um, the potential for improving the streetscape as well as the appearance of the existing building would add substantial benefit to the uh, surrounding properties, as well as the um, existing uh, rail trail infrastructure. Uh, the only thing that we uh, would want to ask, although uh, I'm well aware of the uh, all the various uh, nuances with the property, um, is um, better assistance with mitigating the existing um, uh, existing issues with uh, uh, water runoff. And I'm aware that the parking lot is owned by Norfolk Southern. I'm still working my contacts with them. Uh, but it, from the rear and also um, uh, water runoff from the front, which was moderately um, portioned with the, the uh, Peachtree Road um, uh, reconstruction project. I feel overall, though, that um, the project would as uh, proposed would still add a net benefit to the um, surrounding community as well as the surrounding area. Um, and so I would like to voice my support with uh, the caveats, of course, of, uh, of making, uh, uh, fixing the drainage issue a uh, priority. So that's Very all I have to say. Very good, thank you, sir. Anyone else here wishing to speak in opposition? Hello, my name is Tim Carroll. I live in the condos next door, 5097 Peachtree Street. Um, we are very happy to see this property developed. Um, I hope 
both buildings will end up being done. Um, we have a huge issue with the water runoff, as has been spoken of. It's in the back um, parking lot, which again is owned by the railroad. It slopes down away from the building, and every time it rains, it floods over in our parking lot. Um, hard for us to maintain any nice landscaping over there. When the road construction was done, which we absolutely love, they put in hard curbs, whereas before it was uh, uh, what my neighbor calls a rural curb, where it's the um, grass just runs up to the uh, road. When they did that, the water running off the building and, and from the front of their area runs down on our property, and it's actually making a uh, stream through there. It's washing away all the mulch. It's really a big problem. Um, so we would like to see that handled. And we understand there's this some issues with that, with the railroad. Um, but that needs to be a priority because we just, our parking lot is being ruined and our landscaping is being ruined by that. Um, I would like to support their sidewalk, the five foot sidewalk, however. Um, when the city put that in, they did not build a sidewalk underneath Claremont. They just put plantings there. So to go from a, I think a four or five foot sidewalk to no sidewalk to a 10 foot sidewalk would be a little crazy and the impervious area would be greatly reduced. But we do support it, but we, we really need some relief on the water, surface okay. water issues. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Barry Edwards. I'm a resident of 5097 Peachtree Street. Actually, I'm uh, neighbors with the fellows that just spoke up here, and I'm really just talking to express uh, the same concerns that they uh, mentioned about the water runoff. It's been an issue for several years now. I've lived in the building for about four. And it's been a problem ever since then. Um, there, it seems like there have been attempts to remediate the issue, but it's just not solving the problem. So. I'm hoping to express my concerns so that the applicant and the owner can get together and um, try and fix the portion that they have the ability to address, um, give the unique features of the building, and then um, perhaps also working with us to um, negotiate some kind of uh, remediation with the uh, railroad company who owns that back portion. That's all I have. Thank you. Very good, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? All right. Seeing none, does anybody want to exit the public hearing? Motion to exit the public hearing. Second. There's a motion and a second to exit the public hearing. All in favor? All right. We'll move right on into the work session. John, do we have any announcements or presentations this evening? Very good. Under staff action items under city clerk, we have the downtown development authority appointments. John? We, we do have the approval of minutes also. Oh, uh, but did I just skip that? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You knew that was in bold too. <laughs> How'd I miss that? All right. <laughs> we do have the approval of minutes. Anybody have anything on that? Go back. All right, see attached. The approval of minutes from February the 10th and from February the 15th. Any questions from council on the minutes? All right, all right. Now we'll move right on down to the Downtown Development Authority appointments. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we do have uh, two open seats on the Downtown Development Authority. Appointees to uh, the DDA uh, need to fit one of a couple of criteria. One, they need to be taxpayers residing in the municipal corporation in the city limits. Uh, and two, they need to be, or two, they need to be owners or operators of a business located uh, in the downtown area and reside within the county. Um, so uh, it can also be a combination of both. Um, we do have um, five applicants uh, for the two open seats. 
uh, and uh, this item moved to Tuesday. So are we looking to fill these on Tuesday? Do they need to be filled on Tuesday? Um, they are currently open, so it, as soon as you would like to fill those seats, that would be good. Um, mm -hmm. But they're, they could be deferred if council wished. Any discussion from staff? I mean, from council? Yeah, I would encourage everybody to uh, make phone calls to these applicants if you haven't already. And under uh, city manager items, I think I have a uh, need to uh, suspend the rules to add an item to the agenda. Would somebody mind making a motion to suspend the rules? Motion to suspend the rules to add an item to the agenda. Yes, Thank you. All in favor? Very good. And I need a motion to uh, add the item award of uh, 2022 paving project to the agenda. Item number four for city manager. I'm sorry? That'd be okay. item number four under city manager. Oh, okay. Award of 2022 paving project. Motion to award it or discuss it? <laughs> add, motion to add it. Motion to add uh, award of the 2022 Elmig paving project to the agenda. Very good. And Thank item you. Item number four under city management. Thank you. Very good. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Very good. All right, John. First up on the uh, items is the uh, Gov Pilot Service Agreement. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Brian Quinlan is here to answer any questions you may have, but I will try to give a quick overview of this. Um, GovPilot uh, provides an opportunity to create workflow efficiencies within uh, the system, within the organization, uh, to help us better respond to customer requests. Um, it does eliminate several paper-based processes. Um, this was an item that was uh, budgeted under uh, with the ARPA uh, funds. Uh, for this year uh, to implement and then uh, to uh, there is an annual maintenance fee. Uh, the service agreement would include uh, kind of a ticketing system uh, that would assist with uh, processes related to vehicle maintenance, uh, stormwater business uh, registrations, uh, facilities maintenance requests, encroachment permits, etc. Very good. That's it? That's it. Questions from council? No questions from council. Do you I think it's going to be wonderful. Okay. The only question I have. <laughs> Item number two, HDL service agreement amendment. Thank you, Mayor and Council. HDL currently provides um, uh, assistance and, and uh, works with us uh, to complete occupation tax licensing for the city as well as alcohol licensing for the city. Uh, we have been very pleased with the uh, occupation tax licensing. Um, we have uh, recognized some improvements in the alcohol side uh, and we'll be making some changes there. Um, what this amendment would do is re it's related to the um, occupation tax licenses is it would actually allow uh, HDL to work on our behalf to identify those uh, companies that have not, uh, you know, come in to get an occupation tax license. Uh, they do that uh, through varied uh, services, they, but they search for those. Um, and uh, as uh, what they find, you know, as they find businesses that um, are not in compliance, uh, they do charge a fee, uh, which is 25 uh, to 35 percent of the revenue generated from that uh, in the first year. So okay. that's all I have. Questions from council? Mm -hmm. Item number three, video streaming services agreement. Thank you, Mayor. We, um, as we move into the new building later this year, um, we, uh, while we love the system that we have, it's very uh, heavy on uh, employee time and effort and uh, occasional uh, mishaps. 
So uh, we would like to move uh, to a uh, curated service. It's called Swagit. Uh, they provide this service to multiple jurisdictions. Um, they, uh, we would be purchasing their camera. in the uh, uh, in uh, our council chambers uh, which we have already located where those would be we were going to place those cameras whether they were swagger cameras or our cameras um, the difference being is that uh, they have someone on the other end uh, who would actually manage all of the your, your close-ups all of your um, uh, various things uh, you know uh, videography uh, that they would do um, and this would replace these three cameras that you're seeing uh, around us today. Um, this was also an item that was budgeted for with ARPA funds and cost roughly $50,000 uh, for implementation. Very good. I love it. Any questions from council? I do have, do have one question. Uh, it's indexed to 75 meetings a year, is, and there's a pretty big, there's a pretty substantial increase after that. Uh, is 75 going to be sufficient for the, our use throughout the year? 75 meetings a year? Yes. I mean, right now, unless we generate a lot of new uh, committees, uh, we should be uh, fine with that uh, number. <laughs> Currently, the DEA Upstairs, I assume the same might be able to start meetings in the council chambers and have their meetings recorded, you know, appropriately and the sound and the volume and all the other stuff. Are they, they also include the graphics in the, the, the four cameras. They, they include some sort of graphics like what they're. If, if you look at the um, image on the screen, oh, well, I do see that. Yeah. That's. Uh, you, you would see that they actually do pull up the agenda uh, for people as they move forward uh, through the agenda, and uh, we would have uh, our presentations. We would send those to them, and they would they would they would move those forward. Uh, do we have the ability to look at any of these um, the customers' production, what what they you know, what the public sees? Um, so we go to armadillo.com. Yeah. Yes. I would. I would uh, definitely look for Amarillo, uh, Texas. Um, but yes, you 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 can. Uh, and and if you would like some others, we can get other uh, others for it. Uh, no, we'll have to uh, we'll have to talk about that in the future budget. The only reason I never wanted to report. Yeah. Um, but I can I can get more uh, clients uh, for you to review. Sure. So is the ultimate goal to have all of our committees meet in council chambers like this? Uh, likely, yes. I mean, that would be, it, it is going to be dedicate, a dedicated space as opposed to what we had previously. So. And was there a big difference in price from, because if we have five committees at 12 meetings a year, plus this one meets twice, we've already gone over, or pretty close to the 75. If, the if, you, if you would like to begin filming every committee, we could do that, and we would have to break into the next year to do that. But we could also charge those. Uh, yeah, we, we could, we, because no. we do have some special calls. We've got our, our rep, um, budget meetings. And sure, we, we will have roughly 35 meetings a year. That's kind of our average. Um, so, um, so, you know, with 75, you have enough for one or two, you know, committees, other committees to, to participate. And if we'd like to add more, we can we can look into that. I mean, it's definitely important to the DEA because it's yeah. money that kind of flows to the DEA that should be part of it. Yeah. But We'd have to. Much, not so much Duchenne and Beautiful and okay. Rackney and maybe the arts, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, one more. More the better. Any other discussion from council? No, that's good. Okay. 
Item number four, the 2022 paving project. Thank you, Mayor. I Thank you, Mayor. I received this uh, today. We did receive um, four bids uh, for our paving project. Um, they uh, were reviewed by our engineer, uh, Kimley Horn, and uh, the low, lowest responsive bidder uh, was Atlanta Paving and Concrete with a bid of $6,081,000. Um, $81,000. $81, so um, I don't have a I don't have a slide for that because I did just get this information in today. So um, we are recommending, and Kimley Horn is recommending uh, moving forward and awarding that uh, project to Atlanta Paving and Concrete Construction. So that project was part of that uh, contract. I can include that on the agenda for Tuesday. It's, I'm a little gun shy about paving projects because of the previous fiasco that we had with, and we're not just awarding this because it's the low bid. We think that this company has a good reputation as well. Uh, Kimley Horn has uh, done the re uh, research and uh, has uh, checked references. Um, and the uh, and yes, they they do uh, state that they recommend or, or that they have met the requirements. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they checked references, uh, checked uh, bidders' performance and responsibilities. They were found to be responsible. Um, mm -hmm. So yes. Um, okay. Um, are there any performance metrics? Uh, we typically have those in terms of the, the timing. Uh, we have had, uh, we do have 120 days for them to complete the project, um, understanding, you know, whether and other uh, things may, might change that. Yeah. Um, and uh, this project is a little different, uh, and one of the reasons we had fewer companies bid on this is that we are doing a full depth rec reclamation on a couple of the streets uh, in Huntley Hills where there is no, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Sub, uh, can't think of the word now, but there's base. no base. Yes, thank you. It's asphalt on dirt. Oh. Um, and so this is, um, I already know the answer, but I'm going to just reinforce it. This is curbs and <coughs> gutters and paved. It's um, For every road that's being paved, the curbs will be evaluated. They have been evaluated, okay. and that it is part of the price. Mm -hmm. Um, not every curb will be raised, uh, but those that uh, are, you know, within a certain, I believe it's three inches, I'm not exactly sure, but they will be uh, evaluated. This also includes um, some ADA ramps uh, that are currently um, in need of repair. It's actually several ADA ramps, and uh, I'll include that in the list uh, for Tuesday. And the repaving, uh, one of the biggest irks that I have is um, two and three and four layers of asphalt on top where where they meet the gutter there's a drop that breaks off and I'm sure that our leaf sucking machine hates those big chunks of asphalt being sucked down its throat um, all of that stuff will be addressed uh, yes that that will be part of the design I'm not gonna um, call them around, I swear I okay <laughs> I will warn them <laughs> Any other questions from council? <laughs> Very good. Uh, we'll move into the development department items. The first item up is PZ 2022-947, that's Shambly Plaza food kiosk variants and waivers. I believe they submitted a request to withdraw without prejudice. If that is the desire of council, I would need someone to make that motion. Motion to allow Chambly Plaza food court, food kiosk and variance of waivers to withdraw without prejudice. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to allow Chambly Plaza food kiosk variances uh, to withdraw without prejudice. All in favor? 
Huh? Did you have discussion? I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> My bad. I'm all over the place tonight. Is there any discussion on this item? <laughs> Very good. You absolutely got to check the box. Thank you for keeping me in check, sir. <laughs> Uh, next up is the uh, item number PZ 2022-967-4253, Shambly-Dunwoody Road. Comments from council? This is the house with the fence. This is the house with the fence. And the dogs and the kids. The deer chasing dog. The deer chasing dog. Uh, no, I have, uh, I like the fence. I like what you've done. I understand the situation. Uh, I'm glad that you, you had a number of fences that, like, went right up to the back of the curb and kind of came right away to you, but you did, just by luck, you stayed out of it right away, so that's a, that's a good thing. But, uh, so, but, uh, I, I understand the situation and how it got to where it is. So, I like the fence. I think one of the intents of that um, of the ordinance is to not obstruct the line of sight of cars, and this clearly does not obstruct anybody's line of sight coming into the neighborhood or leaving the neighborhood. They, they, they have plenty of view of traffic on um, Chambers and Wood Road, and so I don't, I don't think that this um, negates the intent of, of the ordinance. In my, in, in my opinion, the yellow sign that you put up was kind of dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of impeded my vision on Shambly Dunwoody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to thank you for your time and effort you put into your presentation. It's very well done and it's, it's well taken by council. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Elmer? Did I do it right? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for staying with us. Thank we appreciate you. it. Sure thing. Thank you very much. Uh, next item up is PZ 2022-968-2344 uh, Perimeter Park Drive Variances and Waivers, and that is our dental office. Questions from council? No questions. I love that building. It's great. It's beautiful architecture. Oh, you know, but I did have one question. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, come on up because I want to ask you. I think the probably I need to ask of the architect. Come on up. So on the back side of that building, there's, there's a parking lot for the next. A huge drop off. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. It's a difficult. Yeah. But no. we're, the owner is trying. Any other real estate agent that's trying to work with them is trying to make sure that. We can have some overflow spots, and you yeah. can see in those pictures it's sparsely populated yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think, I think we'll have to success working with the neighbors. Yeah. Okay. I love the building. Yeah. What's occupying the space right now? What business, or is it abandoned? The, bus the building right now. Yes. I think it was a. My client owns the building. He bought the building, so everyone's moved out. Okay. So okay. it's not abandoned. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Robert. There are some empty. Uh, leasable spaces and facilities around there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next item up is uh, PZ 2022-969. This is 2197 Irvindale Drive. This is a fence variance for the Distillery of Modern Art. Questions from council? What, I couldn't recognize the shrubs that you planted in front of the fence. What are they? That's an awesome question. Because I'm going to tell you how fast those, they look like sunshine ants. I don't know the name of those plants, but I can certainly get that information for you re really quickly. Yeah, they'll, they'll cover that fence for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sunshine ants. Yeah. Okay. They'll, they'll uh, cover that fence in three years. Yeah. yeah. Like a plant to barn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Leslie well, definitely knows the plants. <laughs> I want to take credit for any or whatever for that pond cleanup. I mean, it was. It was worth it for the record. It was disgusting. It looked horrible. Probably a huge mosquito pit. Because it, it had, I never saw it empty. It had standing 
it's actually lowered we had to when we regraded it the previous owner of the building had never serviced it we of course obviously always service it but it was never meant to hold water it sunk down almost two feet because it had never been cleaned out properly so, uh, okay. so yeah it was that, so that part is definitely amazing. i you know i wish we would have talked about the fence then and not having to talk about it now well, and I trust that you, I mean, you've got to push some of But I think also we had a sort of a change in staff in between the time that you presented yeah. yourself. So, yes. I, so a change yeah. of personalities and reasons and things like that. But we're, you know how supportive we are. Thank you. I just want to say on social media, there's a lot of buzz about your location and people are clamoring for it to get open, so get open. Thank you. We're on the move. We need better contractors around here. But for clarity, though, uh, Michelle, so is, is the repair what actually triggered this or this just came, this just popped up at some point along the way? Why was it not on the front end of this conversation? It was the the code didn't change and the code and it was required to be removed um, it, because the amount of money spent on the on the but no no the the fence the fence was always required it's required by code to be removed it was it was indicated if you're asking it was it on the plans it had been shown on the existing site plans um, and as we're going through with um, the reviews with it bringing it to their attention that it's part of the code that it has to be removed. Replaced by it just needed to be removed. Oh. There, wasn't, there didn't have to be any cost. It just needs to be removed oh. to comply. And, and the, the repair itself didn't trigger the, the action. It was, okay. Yeah. So, correct. Yeah. Correct. So if I'm to understand, this is always the original scope. Was this this fence? Part of the project, or is this? What I'm starting to struggling to understand is why this was brought, being brought up now, as opposed to the original uh, scope of the project, uh, the variances that we we created. Sure, um, I, I didn't see that it was mentioned, identified when we went through the first reviews of it. Um, it does say that they're on the existing plan, that there's an existing fence. Um, it shows um, to be replaced, um, but it's you know as we're going through reviewing it, that it is required to be removed. Okay, very good. Any other questions from council? Gotcha. Thank you. Item number five, uh, 5077 Peachtree Road variances and waivers. Questions from council? Uh, this is Comments? The, uh, storm water. This is the railroad, railroad tracks, yeah. yeah I, I want to talk to whoever wants to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Take the favor. <coughs> so, I mean, I heard a little discussion about, you know, where we're going to explore. I mean, I mean, to me, so, you know, allowing this project to move forward and not fixing the issue, I mean, that's your parking lot back there, whether you own it or not. It's, you're counting it for your parking and that kind of stuff. You're going to be using it. So it seems like, I don't know, it just, uh, I think we need to figure out some more definitive. No, absolutely. Uh, and and the resolution of this before I'm ready to move forward. Uh, absolutely. The, the reason we worded it the way we worded it is because we, um, we haven't occupied the space. He doesn't currently occupy the space, so we haven't been there in a substantial rain event. Uh, we only just learned once the, this was made a public hearing that residents were having issues with runoff. So uh, we haven't yet addressed it in the design because we didn't know it was a design problem to be solved yet. Is this something you need a little time and 30 days to maybe figure that out? Or? Well, I, I don't, for the specific things that we're asking for, you know, I guess that's at your discretion. You know, obviously w he wants to solve the problem the same as us because when he, once we did hear about it, it's rained the past couple of days, he did visit the site, realized it is a pond back there. So it doesn't work for him as a property owner either. Um, you know, so we've, we've become preliminary discussions about like ways to mitigate that, whether that's trying to incorporate biosoils into the landscaping uh, that, that we can control 
uh, addressing it with permeable pavers um, at, you know, for a portion of the parking lot in the back, uh, but they're only just preliminary discussions because we haven't, uh, you know, that will have to be discussions with our landscape architect who's helping us with the, uh, the frontage. Um, but, you know, again, because it is Norfolk Southern's property, I think the, the lease right now is for use, not for redevelopment. So, you know, anything that we do on there is going to have to get uh, ultimately approval by them. But, uh, so I can't say exactly what the solutions are because we don't have them yet. Right. Um, I mean, you know, half the building would disappear then and have a place for the water to go. So that's okay. We don't we want to avoid that, you know, because you know, that, sure. that, is, that you could control, you know, if you want to have one building or two. You know, uh, you know, if one of them was building two was to disappear and start to become a private whale, you know, for the rest of the property, then I, I understand. Well, the, the slope goes, yeah, the, unfortunately, the slope actually goes towards the condo to the north. So, oh, I have my building wrong? Yeah, so the, right. the building that they're trying to occupy is, is the one that would. But anyway, well, you get my point. I do. We, you get my point. We and get it and we need it. And then I, I recently learned also about the how your gutters direct the water behind our curb, which traps the water between the building and then and causes it to go towards the condo that way. Right? And maybe that's something we can look at, but that's also... No, that's, that's where we're trying to address that specifically with the, the, the softscape in the front. So right now, with it just being a grass lawn, the, the runoff of the roof goes directly off the roof onto the ground. The, the groundscape that's there now doesn't absorb any of that water very well, and so it's just running out to the, the curve. And because the slope of the topography goes to the north, it's, it's traveling this way. So we are trying to address that by uh, taking out the, the gravel or just the gravel, putting in uh, more substantial groundscape than just uh, ground covering grass, um, and capturing that basically between the sidewalk and the front of the building, um, so that we're reducing how much is running out onto the, the street. Well, and you have to, to, to improves the permeability of the sub base of the soil as well. Right, that's exactly. Because water is not pricking through. The no, it's just it's just soil. clay. And so part of putting in the sidewalk, putting in the, the plants, I mean, the same thing with the plants. The plants want a better base to grow in as well than just uh, red clay, so. Well, if the, how, how long have these problems been going on? Is it because it, did, did the, curbing that was put in with the streetscape that the city just recently did make it worse or did it is has it always happened since the cannery was built? Uh, once again, um, uh, it is my my understanding that uh, it did make it slightly worse. Uh, however, there has con there has been continual um, Runoff from the uh, rear of the, that property. So it always happens. Yes. So the cannery came in, and it is my understanding that um, I don't I don't know if there was a property there previously, um, but it it is my understanding though that that has been the yeah. rear drain or runoff has been a continual issue. And so the, your back parking lot is downhill from them, Correct. and what is downhill from you? The, the uh, townhomes? The townhomes. Is there, is there an obstructed flow now? Um, in right. our case, we have a siding. Um, so we do have a siding um, that is going along the side of our building and that redirects the water towards a uh, weir that's at our north uh, northern corner where there's a gap that goes into the uh, city stormwater system. Okay. And that's actually where most of the water from the uh, runoff from the adjacent property that's being yeah. that's under review, it, it ultimately goes through our parking lot and ends up in the same the place. That's the case scenario. It would, go, it would go in a pipe under your parking lot to that same stormwater, and not because otherwise, if ideally, the curb it's going to carry your mulch no matter what. Yeah, I, ideally, um, that that would be our goal is to work with. Uh, Okay. Um, Norfolk Southern and the yeah. city uh, to, of course, the future property owner to uh, mm -hmm. come up with the best solution. Mm -hmm. And we're willing to facilitate. I, I think I'm just yeah. sort of trying to get a little understanding of there's been a sequence of events that have made this problem a little bit worse every time something occurs. 
and so it's not like you're, you're being out there about uh, fixing the drainage problems. You, you absolutely want to fix. We absolutely want to fix as yeah. best we can, knowing knowing that uh, in terms of park infrastructure, because it's not physically their property once they take ownership of it. You know, putting a park sewer on Norfolk Southern property is subject to them. Yeah. But we might be able to, as part of the agreement, come up with soft gate solutions on that edge as part of the maintenance agreement that they have to maintain the parking lot, yeah. be able to try to minimize as much as we can. Mm -hmm. um, but within the, the actual boundaries of the piece of property we have, we, we have very limited control. And, yeah. and, and does, your, does your property actually, does the parking lot, does water pool there? It, it, does, it does not pool in our parking lot. Okay. It does pool in theirs, so. Okay, okay. But Councilwoman, we, we did look at this when we were uh, doing the, the Peachtree Road streetscape, and um, we did work with the property management firm uh, on this issue. Once the curb went up, there was some, you know, it did retain some of that water from the roof. Um, we did put in some bioswales, and uh, but the property manager did want to keep those rocks, um, and uh, that was something that we had recommended against. Uh, but that, but that was their desire. Um, I will say that uh, the issue in the back of the property, there's no extra water going into the back of the property uh, from from the Peachtree Road streetscape. Uh, that hasn't changed uh, it it is uh, but the front of the area the because of the curb and uh, the water coming off the roof that area did change during that project and that was something that we did address at the request uh, of the prop property manager previous property manager um, and we did work on that uh, after the project was completed uh, and thought we had come to uh, to where it was uh, completed. Uh, we had sign off from the property manager that you know, that our efforts were were finalized and and that they would take it from there. So I do have one other question. You know, uh, pictures are deceiving, and one of the pictures that you showed is the front of your building. It's all it's uh, drawn. It's not photographed. The front of your building, and you have a person walking into the front door that one and his head is quite a bit below that big beam that is that back four feet tall <laughs> because, no because we are we're are you we're, gonna cut that? we're reducing that soffit height so okay, that's, that's part of what the redesign is we're, we're trying to step that soffit yeah so that it's not too deep yeah um, because uh it's, it's currently like just above like six to eight like yeah. uh 88 click like it meets the technical building code requirement for high clearance, but yeah. it's uncomfortable. Uh -huh. So yeah, part of the proposed design is to reshape that even the front yeah. to make that feel more open. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, that, that's impressive. Yeah, so, it, it feels quite heavy. It's it's part of rendering. Rendering. So the rendering. So the person is a short. We, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to make the appearance of that as a structure center. Yeah. Okay, cool. I like it. Any other questions from council? No more questions? I, I would only say this. It sounds like we've got quite a bit to solve on the uh, drainage issue, but especially between now and Tuesday. Uh, and I don't know that we can do that. I know it's been a problem because I've heard about it for the last couple of years now, actually. Uh, so I do want to see us, uh, I, I do want to know what direction at least we're going. Um, my only other comment, and I could be the only one that feels this way, but it's my opinion, uh, moving the, not moving the light poles is a, is a concern for me. Uh, if you go back to that photo, can you go back to the photo where the sidewalk kind of juts back out to the street? I guess it's the previous rendering site plan. Go back one more. Yeah, uh, go back to that. Yeah, right there. So you see the sidewalk really just comes right out to the street. And uh, I, I know how often our light poles get hit because they're close to the road and I, I hate to replace a, a light pole, but uh, I, I would much rather replace a light pole than a, than a person. Uh, you can't replace a person. 
so I am concerned that, uh, you know, you see further down on the street, you have the light pole right up next to the road. That's a new one that I guess y'all would be putting in. No, that's, uh, that's actually, this yeah. rendering is, is showing that the, the place that I encourage. Like, if you look at the pipe plan, yeah. okay. uh, it's, it's actually behind the sidewalk, so the sidewalk is jutting back out again on that end. Okay, so this so this drawing right here is not accurate. That's the the the, the, the rendering is not showing the correct placement of that because we located that when we did the rendering based on the survey. The survey had it incorrectly located. Okay. So when we drew the site, so the, the, the site plan, the, the light farthest to the right is where we're putting the bench. Um, so the sidewalk we're showing the jutting back out to that. Now that's not just to avoid the light poles, but if if we were able to continue the sidewalk from that point to where it stops on the other side of Claremont, because the sidewalk doesn't continue under Claremont, the only place to put it without removing uh, part of the condo parking lot is up on the curb. So we're actually aligning where the sidewalk would have to meet the So, but at its, at its closest point, it is next to the road, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying though. Like where where the the only place to put a sidewalk where the property continues under the overpass is up on that curb because there's parking lots that's stretching around. It's just where the side is. Gotcha. The other end is in the middle of the thing. I think I have a and photograph in the dog around. I have a photograph there. in the packet. The middle of the site. That will be the overpass. Okay. Okay, I'll do some more digging on that over the weekend. All right, that's it. Thank you. Uh, up next on the agenda, we have uh, the Police Department uh, Viewpoint Help Co-Responder Program. Chief, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm very pleased to present this uh, program. We're requesting approval of an MOU with Viewpoint Help. Uh, to start a co-responder program. Um, we believe this program will place our agency at the forefront of a safer and more compassionate approach to calls involving emotionally disturbed persons and those suffering from mental illness. Uh, we would have a clinician on site here at the police department. We'll provide them with a desk and a radio and they'll be here 40 hours a week available to assist officers in these types of, of calls. Furthermore, that clinician is also going to be in the squad room with the officers, getting to know them, and we hope that they can be a working in partnership with our department chaplains to assist officers dealing with uh, the aftermath of critical incidents. Uh, the best news of all is that the program is, is fully grant funded, it's free to the city, um, and uh, in law enforcement, we do believe in, in having backup, and so tonight I brought with me two employees from Viewpoint Health. I'd like to present uh, Ann McMicken, who is the team lead of the Law Enforcement Co-Responder Program, and Chad Jones, the Vice President for Business Development, and together I'm sure that we will be able to answer any questions that you may have. Very good. Now what if we don't have any questions? Well, then what, what if we just want to say yes, you go ahead. Uh, I, I, <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't have anything. Does anybody from council have any questions? It's very worthwhile. Yes, I'm very excited about it. Very worthwhile. I, I, have, I have one small question. Um, it's grant funded. What's the renewal cycle on the grant? Thank y'all so much for having us, and thank you for your question. I was excited. I was like, hopefully somebody's going to ask a question. Um, so Chad Jones, I'm the Vice President of Business Development for, for Viewpoint Health, and um, I wrote the grant to Department of Behavioral Health. Um, it is fully funded uh, for uh, one year, and then there's a one-year extra term, so it'll be two two full years. Very good. Thank you. Yep. And uh, in, 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 in addition to that, uh, almost always, just to let you know that if we, uh, as we get started up with the grant, um, if there's any money that's left over, which almost always there are with grants a lot of times, um, uh, we pretty much bat a thousand of viewpoint health just with our relationships with the Department of Behavioral Health that we always file for a no-cost extension. Um, and 
Well, almost almost always we get we get approved for those. So if there's any monies left over uh, for what we've allocated for the two years, then we'll get a no cost extension to go ahead and spend the rest. So, Very good. Yep. Yes, sir. Not having questions does not mean that we are not excited <laughs> about it. Uh, to, to be honest, it's something that we have needed and yeah. wanted for yeah. a long time, Great. and and we're so glad to to have this yes, in front that's of us. Right. Well, we're glad to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Under Public Works, we have a Public Works facility upgrade. Thank you, Mayor. We have um, tearing down the building and building. Do you want to take it? Go ahead. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to apologize for the picture, um, but I will say that the track, trash rack at um, Dresden Park is to be installed next Wednesday. But uh, I'm here tonight to request the mayor to sign an agreement with Reeves Young for design build services for the locker room renovations at the public works facility. Currently, we only have one woman's restroom and one men's restroom, and the only shower facility we have is in the woman's restroom. This has caused a problem, um, especially as you can imagine when our crews are out in the field, they can get dirty and they do need a shower, um, and it's really created an issue in terms of accessibility to the shower during the work day. Um, we also have a limited number of um, restrooms for the, for the gentlemen to use, and so we are proposing to put an additional restroom facility within their locker room so that there's just more restrooms available. Um, we do have funds that have been uh, approved in the 2022 budget for this project. So you are prefacing that by saying that is not what the current showers <laughs> look like. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> but this might be a cause for them to need more showers. <laughs> yeah. If they were to go into this to clean this up, I will say that um, I personally would not want to have to go into the woman's restroom afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Any questions from council? Very good. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, John, do you want to have a discussion on the uh, stormwater management ordinance amendment at this time? I believe we can take that when it comes up on the agenda. All right, we'll keep yeah. moving. I know that's under public it, works as well. It was an it was an error in the agenda software. We we apologize for that. That might, that item should have been under public works, but it is in the, under first readings. But we will address it. At very good. Very good. Under economic development, the amendment to the alcohol ordinance, specifically tap rooms. Thank you, Mayor and Council. We have, uh, the staff have, has uh, reviewed other ordinances uh, in other communities related to tap rooms um, and is uh, prepared to, for you tonight an ordinance uh, that would <coughs> allow uh, tap rooms uh, and create tap rooms in our alcohol ordinance. A tap room would be a retail establishment. Um, <coughs> we do have several locations uh, that tap rooms could be uh, in. Uh, in terms of uh, zoning district, that is something uh, for uh, discussion and consideration. Um, we may want to, uh, you know, limit that at first uh, and see how that works. Um, it is uh, a tap room would be primarily devoted to the retail uh, sale of uh, malt beverages or wine, um, and uh, they would dispense uh, those beverages using uh, taps connected to barrels casks, kegs, etc. Um, and, and bottles or other containers. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it would be dispensed from pretty much everything, but it does not, um, it does not allow for like, uh, for individual uh, bottled uh, sales. Right. Okay. No, it would it would have to be a. Um, obviously, this is the uh, Cliff Notes version, uh, but but the ordinance is in the packet, and I can I can. Uh, just slightly, but that's okay. Just slightly, but that's okay. But uh, but we can I can review that and and come back uh, to council with more information on that on that piece. I, 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 when we originally started talking about this, we did not have it in more than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that ten different zoning districts? We did not, we talked about doing it in the 
downtown or TV district, something along those lines, and then expanded from there. So I, this is well beyond my original kind of discussion of this topic. And uh, I, I, I feel like it's a lot easier to expand than it is to pull back after, especially after you know. So that's just my opinion. I would, I just look at the map, but I think it's probably. Maybe the TOD and maybe the PUD and the two specific ones at this point, but, uh, uh, but I, it doesn't need to be an NC1, NC2, uh, uh, CC, DC, 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 any of those. That's my opinion. I don't know what anybody else thinks, but that's just. I, I, I think that you I would have to, um, I have to think through all of these. Right, right, right. But yeah. Well, and, and why I? I'd have to go back and look. I'd have to go back and, and, and look at that. Um, I would uh, restrict it to the PUD for now, and we could uh, expand it at a later point as, I agree as with council that. becomes comfortable <clears throat> with that. Sorry to push up the box at this point. That's all right. No, we won't That's all right. And now for the rest of the presentation. Um, <laughs> on these tap room establishments, uh, there would be no food or, or uh, non-alcoholic sales uh, requirements. And so you would have uh, up to 100% of, of revenue from alcohol sales, uh, provided that they come from you know, taps. Uh, you would be required to offer them, they would be required to offer a minimum of 15 uh, beers or wines on tap. They could do both or either. Um, there would be, um, and I do, now that I go back to that, it is the wine bottles, uh, but, but we'll, we'll get back to that later. Uh, no liquor uh, may be served, so there would be no liquor in these establishments. It would only be beer or wine. And the hours of operation would be limited uh, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. So that is slightly different than uh, some of the other uh, in, in the alcohol ordinance, there is the ability to stay open till two, uh, provided that you have um, a security plan. So uh, they would not have that ability in the tap room. And why um, did we decide that? What's that? Why did we decide that? Um, well, first of all, this has uh, no food sales requirements, so it is uh, purely alcohol sales uh, that would be occurring on the premises, or, or could be. I mean, they could have some uh, food sales, but. Uh, there would be no requirement for food sales, so it would be 100% alcohol sales. Um, I agree with that decision. So I think on the bottle, they may say the size of the bottle, or I'll have, you know, or something like that. I'll have to go back and look and see if that's in the ordinance, and, and I can bring that clarification on Tuesday. <laughs> I know it's, this all began because we had a request from a purveyor. Um, I understand the PUD, but it seems to be like this is the perfect thing to have in a neighbor in a neighborhood commercial. Um, because I would assume, I mean, this is we're, we're talking about people driving to this establishment, having drinks. We know more than two, I'm sure, and then driving home. So, with no food in their stomach to absorb any of that. So, I mean, the whole purpose is to drink. And while I'm in favor of tap rooms, I feel like that sort of goes against the whole reasoning that we've ever um, had for having restaurants have to serve food. Uh, and having restaurants that have alcohol have to serve I'm sorry, serving alcohol, you have to have a restaurant and serve food. So it worries me a little bit. Sure. Um, That's why I think we should be small. Yeah. And. But I know what you're saying about the proximity. You're not going to limit just because somebody goes. I have to go see whether the neighborhood commercial one and neighborhood commercial two are exactly located. Not very many of them. We don't have any right now. We don't have anybody that's done that. 
in our neighborhood. In C1, and C2, yeah. or whatever the first one was. It's in C1, yeah. In C1, C. What did anybody know in today? You didn't read that. I don't know. What is the NC1? Is that like Texan Woods and the Huntley Hills? Or yeah, that, is that in our in the NR one? Yep. Yes. But now, now it's in some of our neighborhoods, it, you are allowed to open up a, a chat. If it, there are parameters for for opening up a, 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 a commercial establishment in an NR one neighborhood. A restaurant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, in NR. I'm sorry, you're speaking about in, in the NC, I believe, and I'm going to turn to Michelle here and verify this, but that's our uh, more townhomes and uh, higher density. Where, where are some, Andrew, you know where NC1 and NC2? About Claremont. I think it's coming up before. Where are you going to do um, other uh, uh, Hardy Avenue and Claremont. Uh, there's also some pockets of the NC zoning district off of North Peachtree between Peachtree Road and Peachtree Boulevard. Right. Yeah. So it's not very widespread. It's not like it's going to be a lot of shape in your house. <laughs> I'd be happy with the car. I know. I know. That's where you're going. That's what I wanted. Uh, no, okay, okay. That's I, you know, I, I definitely think that we should limit it and, and see how it goes. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Because I like the idea of doing it. Yes. How do we land on having uh, it close on Sundays? That has to do with state law. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to go back and, and double check. I just on that. think they get Brookhaven. And I, and I do apologize, uh, Laura Lemon was. She was here earlier tonight, but she has some uh, family emergency that she needed what, to deal with. Working on that. Yeah, she worked yeah. on this. Yeah. I'll hold off my questions then. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments from council? All right. Uh, community engagement department website services agreement. Thank you, Mayor. We would. Uh, requesting authorization to sign for the mayor to sign a uh, website service agreement with revise for thirty one thousand dollars and thirty one thousand seven hundred sixty dollars this was uh, budgeted uh, with the ARP uh, not APRA but ARPA funding um, and uh, this would be a complete redo of the city website which is long overdue oh, no. Uh, as good as it is, we believe it can be made uh, no better. You're currently paying for a website. That's a good question. I, I I don't have that number off the top of my head, but this that does include uh, the um, installation implementation uh, fee as well. Very good. Any other questions from Bill? Very good. All right. Now we can talk about the stormwater management ordinance amendment. Thank you. I'll go for it. Uh, thank you, Mayor. We we do have before you uh, an ordinance amendment to the to the stormwater uh, management ordinance. Um, we are requesting that you adopt the proposed amendments. Uh, it's one. It's just a general cleanup of some of the language there. Uh, when the city uh, did take over that uh, utility, um, somehow in creating that uh, ordinance. Uh, DeKalb County was mentioned several times, and so we've uh, cleaned that up. Um, secondly, uh, it uh, revises the language uh, related to findings to allow for more clarity. Um, and if you have any questions about that, uh, Courtney would be happy to answer it. Uh, and then finally, it removes uh, references to the fee schedule in this ordinance. We did try to move all of those fee schedules out to, to the um, fee schedule that's adopted annually uh, by resolution uh, and so the stormwater ordinance still has uh, that fee schedule in the ordinance so this would remove uh, the specific stormwater service fee uh, rates uh, and what the equivalent residential unit uh, square footage amount is uh, and uh, rather reference uh, that they are set forth in the city's uh, fee schedule we are undergoing a, uh, uh, or we have uh, hired a ponding company uh, previously, and they have done a stormwater uh, review of our capital needs uh, and our management needs. Um, and so we will be bringing that forward to you soon. 
uh, with, with their findings, uh, and that could affect, uh, and probably, I'll just prepare you, will affect uh, what a uh, recommended uh, fee schedule or, or fee would be uh, for stormwater uh, coming up. I'm not sure if I like the way you emphasized yeah. I will prepare you. Yeah, I, I, I want to prepare you. There are several stormwater needs in the city uh, to be addressed. Uh, and of course, to address those needs, we will need to set aside some funding for that. Absolutely. So um, we have a presentation that's being prepared for next month, but I'm not, we do not currently have that uh, defined and clarified. Uh, we're still working on it. Not the things we enjoy spending money on, but yeah, necessary. Right, right. It is something we decided to do, um, and uh, the cleanups were there and existed and needed to be done, and the. Uh, the fee schedule uh, needs to be pulled out uh, for us to consider uh, that in the future. Um, so we, have, we do have several problems that are, some of which are on uh, personal property, I mean citizens' property. Um, and it is part of the responsibility, our responsibility, to assist homeowners in making sure that their stormwater water does not exceed. But these are pre-existing uh, problems that um, are caused by a degradation of what was put in place originally, some of which was not substantial enough in the first place, some of which was, but has been, simply has degraded. Are we, uh, we've identified those sites? So, we have, our, our consultant has gone through and identified multiple sites. Um, I don't know, I mean, some of those are probably included in what you've captured and, and what you're thinking of. I'm not sure if all of them are. Uh, we will state that there were several sites, uh, there were several areas where uh, we could not access uh, all of the infrastructure. And so there's, a need for us to go back, uh, and, and there's a cost associated with that, uh, into these areas that have been identified to uh, to further map uh, and make and, and understand what the condition of that infrastructure is. Uh, so I know that that's a budget item that will be you know coming up in the next year uh, to go back to those specific areas, uh, but but we have. Uh, identified a majority uh, and, and been able to assess a majority of the stormwater structures uh, in, in the city. Do we regularly inspect our creeks? Our creeks? Yeah. Because I've, I've had several uh, well, people complain about logs in the creeks and creating dams and diverting water onto property and stuff On like private that. property yeah. creeks? Um, so as a part of the MS4 program, um, we do have to do some amount of um, inspection. It's not to, I believe, the degree that you're suggesting with, you know, is there debris, is there, are there logs, trash, what have you. Um, the way that our current policy is stated is um, the EOS, Extent of Service, Level of Service policy is that streams along um, within, the, within anyone's private property or on the border are actually the responsibility of the property owner. Okay. So that is, um, it's very common in the Atlanta Metro to have that as the, as the policy. I understand that it does cause a lot of issues um, when things, if you live downstream, um, you may have, you know, more of that be your problem than folks upstream. Yeah. So. I, I, I wonder if um, people understand that, do they have streams on their property? There, um, there was a, um, a, a signal article that went out this past year mentioning um, streams and stream buffers and who's the ownership and the maintenance and the responsibility. Um, there's definitely a need for a public education yeah. component for that, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from Council? Thank you, very good. 
All right, that moves us down to uh, mayor and council items. I have a couple of resolutions this evening. First one up is a resolution in support of Ukraine, supporting the people of Ukraine. This is a uh, I don't think this body normally uh, does symbolic uh, type resolutions, uh, but uh, this one was uh, very important uh, given the situation that we are currently finding ourselves in. Um, the city of Chambly does have a very diverse population, and among us we do have a number of Ukrainian citizens. And uh, this council felt that it was important um, to, to support uh, the people of Ukraine. So I'll read this real quick. It's pretty short. Whereas following the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Ukrainian people voted overwhelmingly to form a nation independent from Russia. And whereas on February the 24th, uh, 2022, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin launched a large scale unjust and unwarranted invasion of Ukraine in violation of international peace and security agreements, and whereas Russian troops have met with strong and courageous op opposition uh, from the Ukrainian military and citizen resistance, and whereas the Ukrainian people are courageously fighting to, to defend their country against the brutality of this violent war, which is an affront to both in international law and common decency, and whereas the city of Chambly stands in solidarity with the Ukrainian people, and the city desires to express its support and admiration for Ukrainian citizens during these turbulent times. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and city council of the city of Chambly that the city of Chambly proudly stands with the Ukrainian people and its leaders during this immoral, illegal, and indefensible invasion of their country, and that the city manager is directed to illuminate City Hall and the blue and yellow colors of the Ukrainian flag as a symbol of the city's support, adopted uh, by the City Council, City of Chambly, Georgia, on this 10th day of March 2022. Any discussion on this item? Is there a time limit on the lighting of City Hall? Uh, we haven't discussed a, a time limit on it. Uh, I, I would say we would kind of just play it by ear right now okay. until. Uh, if, if it's the desire of this council to pass this resolution, I would entertain a motion to do that this evening. Motion to pass this resolution on Ukraine. Second. Okay. have a motion and a second. All in favor? Very good. Carries unanimously. Thank you so much. Second item up, uh, a little more closer to home, is a resolution opposing House Bill 1093 and Senate Bill 494, opposing limitations on a city's authority to make housing and land use and zoning decisions within the local government's geographical boundaries. This one's a little bit longer. I will not read it. It is in the record, um, or, or will be in the record uh, before Tuesday. Uh, and I also emailed it to everybody, but uh, basically we have a situation where uh, the state governing uh, authority uh, is uh, looking at uh, allowing for entire subdivisions to be built uh, by corporate housing uh, and uh, as, as complete rental uh, communities. Uh, with uh, which basically takes away from uh, a city's uh, ability or a local government's ability to regulate or restrict uh, the condition uh, of, of those uh, subdivisions. And it's uh, basically against uh, what we believe is uh, the Georgia Constitution recognizes zoning and land use decisions are core functions of local governments and housing is a large component of, of those decisions and to ensure uh, sustainable uh, communities and affordable communities uh, and, and for uh, home ownership, uh, I, I would like to recommend uh, that we let our legislators know that we are opposed uh, to uh, and object uh, to the, any legislation or act which would limit a local government authority's uh, 
to, to make a land use or zoning decision within its geographical boundaries. Any comments or questions? Motion to adopt a resolution opposing House Bill 1093 and Senate Bill 494. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to adopt this resolution this evening. All in favor? Any discussion? I figured we had discussed that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to be adopted this evening, but I'm glad it was. So thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, under uh, Councilwoman Lupton, who is sitting in the audience this evening, who is, uh, uh, I guess I should have mentioned that from the get-go, Councilwoman Lupton resigned earlier this week uh, to uh, put her name in the hat for a State House seat. We wish her very well on that. And I believe she passed this item along to uh, Council Member First, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, so you have an item on the agenda then, sir, for the Peachtree Creek Greenway. Yes, I would like to invite Peachtree Creek Greenway up to present uh, the proposed uh, mile here in Chamley, among other things. forward and backward. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Um, I'm Jeffrey F. and I am recognizing the hour that it is, the long week that it's been. I'm going to talk to you about the Peachtree Creek Greenway and my goal is to be brief, be bright, be gone, and have you all as engaged in what we want to do here in Chambly um, as we are. So to that end, um, we'll talk about the Greenway, PCGI, our organization. I'll share with you what's going on in the other jurisdictions, and um, we'll get to any questions or next steps. And we do have some new information to share relative to the time when I did this a week ago, because things are happening fast along the Greenway. Um, so, as you know, the Atlanta Regional Commission has designated the Peachtree Creek Greenway, the 12 miles of the Greenway from the city of Atlanta up through 285 and around Silverback Park area as a trail of regional significance. This trail they see as a linchpin to completing a lot of the trail plans um, across Georgia or across, across the Atlanta region, Georgia. Really, you should be able to get on a trail ultimately from north of us even and ride all the way over to Alabama is the vision. Um, so it's a trail of regional significance. DeKalb County has had it in their trail plan since 2020. So 20 years later, uh, you know, it's, it's beginning to move and pick, up the, and pick up steam fast. This is both a local effort um, and it's also an effort all the way up to the federal government. So the Peachtree Creek Greenway, Inc. is us. We are a nonprofit advocacy group advocating for the Peachtree Creek Greenway to be built. We do not have funds to build the Greenway for you. That's not what we do. We don't have engineers to make that happen. But what we, one of the things we can do and do do as an advocacy organization is we can talk to and engage with property owners about their land use for the Greenway. Um, so myself, I'm a board member of the Greenway, joined the board last year. I'm the liaison for Chambly. Betsy Eggers is also here. Betsy founded the organization about eight years ago, and she's now graduated to being an assistant and just tagging along for the ride, <laughs> but is still with us. Chris Hester is our executive director, so that's the who we are. Uh, let's take a look in terms of um, where this is going and where, and where we've been. Um, going south first to Brookhaven, the first mile was built December 2019 It opened. Um, activity has begun to increase along the Greenway there. For example, they did movies last summer. Um, they were actually done in Spanish with English subtitles in, one, in the uh, grassy area there. 
Um, also happening on the Greenway coming up this year, CDC is leveraging the Greenway as an asset towards their bringing people back to the office piece. So they're going to be kicking off um, an initiative in April. So having this trail outside is certainly an asset and a benefit to get us out of our houses and back into an office. And, you know, Shambly, we know, has certainly got office, office space there. Um, phase two of the Greenway is moving forward. They have um, funding for it through the um, TIP program. No, I'm sorry, Atlanta's got the TIP program, but phase two um, is using their, uh, is, uh, they've got a bond, I believe, that is for that, for, for the Greenway. Phase three, um, they're also well on the way, and the interesting piece is they expect to award a contract on that soon, and they may wind up doing, getting some efficiencies and doing phase two and phase three together. Further south, Atlanta, believe it or not, Atlanta has actually paved about a third of their area. They got funding through the South Fork Conservancy, south Fork Conservancy, Conservancy to do that. <laughs> it's late. I did say that, right? Um, so they did funding for that, and they actually, they, pay, they went on and paved. They haven't done the lights or anything, but recognizing what the specs are for the Greenway, they went on and made sure that all of the resources are there to be able to go on and light it later when they finish. But they were able to get some funds through the GOSA grant, took the money, got started, um, and got the process ro rolling. Atlanta um, does have funds through ARC and the TIP program. They also have it as a line item on their 2022 spot. Uh, so then they're shambling in terms of where we are. Um, Shambly was actually included in DeKalb County's North Fork Peachtree Greenway study, which was basically Claremont Road North. So Shambly was included there, which Shambly didn't have to pay for, lucky Shambly. Uh, there was a public, public meeting held in October um, to present it to the community there, so there was good turnout from Shambly citizens for that. Um, so it's moving, for, so moving forward. Uh, so the other pieces that Shambly has done was the Shambly has um, obviously included the Greenway in the 2019 um, mobility plan, as well as in 2020 codified the design standards for the Greenway. So looking at the um, Petrie Doraville in terms of going north, Doraville said, well, we weren't included in that DeKalb County plan. They went on and paid for their own study to be done. Their biggest challenge is going to be trying to figure out if they're going to go, you know, under or over I-85 <laughs> on the other side there. Uh, so again, Shambly was mentioned, was completed in their multimodal plan that they, uh, they got that piece done, um, as well as the codified standards. So where does it go in Shambly? Shambly is the red line here. So it goes from Claremont Road behind the Sam's Club, Marriott, uh, the Highwoods properties there, and up to Fisher Trail Park. So it's about, it's about as long as Brookhaven is currently, about just approximately a mile and a quarter there. So this is from the Norfolk Peachtree Greenway study. First thing, Shambly, first thing it does in Shambly is it goes under Claremont Road. Um, so that part has been, has been determined that it goes under Claremont Road, which answers one of the many misconceptions that has been floating in terms about where the Greenway is going to go. Um, the study identified you know, many of the benefits as to why uh, you know, the Greenway will be beneficial to Shambly in that area as well as, I mean, what they said essentially in the study by way of an obstacle, the biggest obstacle was just dealing with property owners, which happens. Again, this is a rendering of the bridge coming under I-85, which is very similar to what it could look like at the corporate square overpass there in Brookhaven. A little look at some of the current conditions. Um, it's actually a little bit clearer back there, parts of it, because the Cab County has been doing sewer work. 
a rendering of the bridge going under I-85 in the access road up to Fisher Trail Park. One of the pieces that's interesting about Shambly is that um, it's unique in that it's going to have the water feature with the retention ponds there, um, but it doesn't have bridges to build because it stays east of, uh, of the creek. So it's between the creek and the detention ponds. We looked at the land records, the tax maps. So again, you can see where the trail goes, where the trail goes and it stays on the, I'll call it the commercial property side of the creek back there. So we're talking about Sam's Club, U-Haul, Marriott, and Highwoods properties and where it goes further behind high woods going up before it gets to the um, highways. Again, those are, that's high woods property. Looking at the tax records, so we identify, well, who owns the land? We started there. And then we went, began talking to the folks who own the land, because again, that's something that we are able to do. Um, the high woods people, they have given us a, um, a written letter of intent, which you all have in your package as well, that they are interested in having the Greenway there and at granting the city an easement for the Greenway at no cost. Again, as in terms of some newer news, um, you know, Marriott, you know, they're also on board uh, to do the Greenway, again, at no cost. We've been in touch with the owners of the land as well, with Sam's Club and U-Haul, um, both the owners as well as the um, Sam's Club Corporation and, and U-Haul Corporation. They also have said that they want to work with the Peachtree Creek Greenway. They want to see it built, and they're willing to grant easements at no cost. So we've got We've got the one letter of intent. Um, we have others that have been putting it in, putting it in writing as well, and we can um, have copies for you all for that, um, as well as um, we don't have the U-Haul's formal looking letter, but U-Haul email said, um, the U-Haul email said, I'd be happy to sign a consent form. They're working on between the attorneys and the leases and so on. So they're working on that. But we do have the letters from the other two properties. So we have 90% of the property in Shambly already with letters of intent from all the With ink on it, right. And they came on the dates. You may want to mention those dates because those are... Right. Like I was saying that they came, and, and they're, they're dated, but um, they came since we completed the presentation in terms of them actually coming in to us. So again, they want to make this work. Now the letters of intent, they may need to be tweaked, they may need MOUs instead, whatever it is, and we're sure that the city and city attorneys can help work with some of that. Uh, one of them was written to the county, not the city. But I, the key piece is that we've now gotten basically one of the key hurdles that was identified as an obstacle in terms of the land ownership that um, wants to see the Greenway built. Mm -hmm. Questions? So go back to that previous slide. Uh-huh. So I just heard some of the PX6 LLC 2079 29-year lease requires approval. What can you that means? that means the, yes, the land, TX6, is a family called the Tuggle family who used to live here umpteen years ago. They granted 99 year leases on that property where U Haul and Sam's are. Now, in the case of Sam's Club, there's apparently an intermediary, who, a real, another real estate intermediary, who actually owns the land. So when we presented to Mr. Tuggle, Mr. Tuggle said, Absolutely, he would love to see this happen on the land, he said, but the tenants have to also consent. I asked the question, I said, is that a nice to do as a landlord or must do as a landlord? And he said, no, it's required within their lease that they must consent. So the people of Sam's have said that they're interested as well because Mr. Tuggle put it forward to them. 
So they Sam's has said they're interested, and U-Haul has said they're interested. U-Haul did say, well, we would like to have a fence. Now, is this 99? They have a 99-year lease, and what? Where where are they at on that name, or this is be a new 99? Um, it no, it it is an existing 99-year lease. How much time? Mr. Tug, I. It's probably somewhere in the neighborhood 39 years. Mr. Tuggle said he'll be dead by then, and he was in his late 60s. Okay, and then, so I've met with Kim Bertetta, along with Karen Lofton, mm -hmm. uh, when she was on city council, and we talked, and we talked about the highway portion, mm -hmm. and he indicated to me pretty clearly that they are in about year 37, 37 left. 37 left in their name, they don't actually own the land, they actually are leasing the land to. Mm -hmm. So, what we're talking about is doing all this work on stuff that's less than 40 years uh, left on whoever the decision maker is at this time. Uh, so, that would be something I would want to see how we can get those extended beyond Highwood lease. Uh, PX6 lease, those kind of things, because those are, while it's fine, you know, the next step is obviously to get a easement granted, an active right. easement, a construction easement, you know, or, uh, that kind of easement granted. But those, my understanding, I'm not a lawyer, but my understanding is that when those leases expire, they, the, the, the easements would also expire. Well, I think that would be dependent upon how easements are written, right? Now, I'm not an attorney, and that's where we get the... That's what my get, question is now, is right. how that would be done. And right. Now we're looking, from everything that I can research, yeah. we're looking at, on all of them now, uh, less than 40 years of yeah. uh, leases on properties. We're not actually getting forever commitments from the property owners. Well... Again, I come back to, um, I'm not an attorney, but you, those right. things, it's like beach easements don't generally don't expire. Driveway easements generally don't expire. Easements are usually transferred with property. So I'm sure that there's a way to make it happen. Well, I guess then the next step would be to try to secure easements that, uh, well, now that language is spelled out in there, like how, when, how long they go for. Right, the sewer easements. And there's a sewer easement on much of the land yeah, as well. All easements, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think all easements are created equal. They're not. Which would be the easement with the property owner rather than the leaseholder. Right. So it the owner directly. Mm -hmm. uh, your point is very well an excellent point, mm -hmm. um, Councilman Lisa. Um, and just for clarification, the TX6 owner is actually the land owner. Right. It's not Sam's Club. It's the Tuggle family that really own, that holds the 99-year lease for the others. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that said, yeah, I'll sign it, but I also want you to talk to the leasees and then together. So these well, were just one that yeah. So I, it's coming. It's I appreciate coming. it. Once these leases, I mean, these leases, I start materializing that you know that's kind of our, i think the next step is actually getting easement drawn up well the, yeah, yeah. Well, get, the real next step is the engineering study because right. there can't yeah, be I easy disagree. Without I disagree. Yeah. well the i, I was going to say one of the things that um you know while like sam's club for particular said we like yes we we, we like the project and we want to do it. They said, well, we generally can't sign anything until we've seen the full design, which becomes the engineering piece. So it becomes, we're in a little bit of a chicken egg situation and a dance where it's really sort of, what we're talking about at this point is whatever memo of understanding, you know, MOU or letter of intent or whatever it is, we're at the beginning of the dance that says, okay, I'll take one step forward and you take one step forward and I take one step forward. Ah, now we have the meets and bounds that we can actually begin to put in a contract. Understood. Any other questions for Council? All right, thank you guys. Great. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to get another letter? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and that was the city attorney and one of the teachers and the supervisor. All right, next up and last up is uh, citizen comments. Anyone in the audience have something to say? Ah. I'm sorry, but we're, we're closing citizen comment now. All right. <laughs> All right, Karen, you have 30 seconds. Anything you want to say? <laughs> you know I can get it done in 30 seconds. Hi, Karen Lupton, once a member of this august body. Um, just thank you so much, guys, for uh, Peach Recruit Greenway folks, Jeffrey and Betsy, for coming tonight. Um, just wanted to stand up as a citizen and say, oh, please get this done. Um, Jeffrey's completely right that it's about um, chicken, egg, who's going to move first. I would really suggest that we just do something to move forward. Um, and... As the presentation said, uh, Brookhaven's part is coming, and it's going to end in our backyard. And I've said this to many of you, I don't know, but I haven't said it publicly, so I'm going to say it now. Um, you, wherever I'm at, you won't hear, this is not the last you will hear from me about getting the B Street Greenway done. And to have uh, Brookhaven's section come to us and have us watch it come and do absolutely nothing to get prepared and then have it be forgive me, ass end of this trail hanging out in our Century Center um, without doing anything about it. It's just a civic embarrassment. So, you know, don't do that. And uh, if I were up there, I'd probably, uh, you know, tell the staff to do something, but I can't do that anymore. So, you know, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. All right. Anybody else have citizen comment? I do. Very good. Mr. Mayor, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm John Barnes. I've been introduced to several of you. Uh, Council Member Rossa, it's nice to meet you. Council Member Spurs, it's nice to meet you. I'm the president of Peachtree Malone Association. We have 132 members. I'm here tonight to talk just a little bit about the impact that your plans for segment four of the rail trail potentially have on our property. You may be aware that uh, as designed and constructed, they would displace several amenities. Our dog park, half of our visitor parking, and in fact, the driveway access for 80% of our residents have reserved parking space. These common elements are owned by our 132 individual members. They're not owned by the association. Last spring, the city valued this property at $132,000. However, none of our residents were invited to participate in that valuation. <laughs> Neither did that include consequential damages to the association, consequential damages to our 132 residents, nor any diminution of value considerations for the amenities we appear destined to lose. Potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in excess of that value. Last fall, we were asked to gather a group of residents, and 22 of our residents worked together to consider the city's plans and attempt to craft a plan which might enable the city to complete its goals and also allow us to support our property rights and condominium amenities. This February, additional design concepts were received, but without the information and design necessary for a complete project description. Even so, our group of 22 thoroughly considered the information and responded with a list of questions and important details like ADA accessibility requirements and construction rules, and they're awaiting a response to continue the discussion. As of today, we have not received coordinated construction documents, real estate agreements, monetary valuations, or other documents constituting a complete proposal that residents can consider. But now I understand there may be interest in skipping that discussion and condemning this portion of our property, suing our 132 residents and their respective mortgage companies and burdening them with the legal procedures of condemnation and eminent domain. We wonder why. What is the plan that would justify condemnation? In the city's construction documents, the path that is intended to cross our property is a 400-foot long concrete pathway, 12 feet wide, with eight-foot fences on both sides. 400 feet long, longer than a football field, with eight-foot fences on each side. No way in or out, save for two pedestrian gates at the Malone Drive end of that 400-foot section. Otherwise, there's no way on or off this 400-foot long stretch of fenced concrete. Also, vines are to be grown on the sides of the fence for landscaping. Never mind if they're hidden by vine-covered fences in a 400-foot-long pathway they can't get off of. Personally, I love the rail trail. I use it regularly. But is this a good idea? In 2016, the city commissioned Heath and Linebacker. And this is the path we set. 
safe, open, and not spent. Those recommendations were endorsed by the then mayor and council members, as well as individual citizens. But the current plan seems to have forgotten those recommendations. Additionally, in the same report, the stakeholder advisory group, the leadership team guiding the process, recommended the path of void Peachtree Malone Loft property. And finally, not only are there new sidewalks already around our property which connect to the rail trail, the engineer's report identified two other would avoid and So that's the background. And from our perspective, it's hard to justify investing more time and much more money to condemn the personal property of 132 residents and mortgage holders all to construct a path which is designed contrarily to the recommendations of the engineers and which is contrary to the recommendation of its own leadership team. On behalf of our association, I respectfully request that the city act to redesign segment four of the rail trail consistent with one of the other alternates proposed by the engineers and commit that it will not take action to serve lawsuits against our 132 residents and mortgage companies in condemnation proceedings. There are at least two other alternates the city could pursue, either of which would be a more valuable use of our public funds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Any other citizen comments this evening? All right, seeing none. John, do we have executive session this evening? We do, Mayor. We do have an executive session for personal matters, land acquisition, or litigation. All right. Anybody want to make a motion to enter executive session for personnel matters, land acquisition, and real estate issues? Yeah. <laughs> and or? I make a motion to move to executive session. Thank you. Do I have a second? All in favor? Very good. All right. Well, we'll step out for a few minutes, and then we will come back to adjourn.
I need a motion to exit executive session. Oh, yeah, that's, we do have to do that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.